Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's story time, I'm going to be telling you how my younger brother got missing in Lagos some years back, okay? Yeah, it was a very traumatic experience for me and some adults who should have known better did some stupid things, okay? But I'll get into it in this video, alright? But if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do, okay? Okay? I'm sure most of you do not know and I have never said it on my channel before but yeah, my younger brother has special needs. He's on the autism spectrum, okay? So basically, yeah, he was born with autism and you guys know how Nigeria is. By the way, if you have a child that has special needs and you're in this country, I think you should start planning your exit as soon as possible if you have the money, okay? If you don't have the money, then internet should be your best friend, okay? You should, yeah, you should have money for data at least, okay? Go on the internet, do a lot of research because in my younger brother's case, we did not know what the issue was until he was much older, okay? And you guys know that these things, the earlier you start to manage it, you know, the better for you and the child, okay? And I mean, ever since he was old enough to go to school, he had been going to different schools, but still, they did not know what was going on. He had gone to different hospitals, different schools, all kinds of schools, and nobody, nobody diagnosed him of anything okay until he was much older by much older i mean late teens if not early 20s okay anyway when i finished secondary school my parents had found a school for my younger brother and that school was in surulere while we were living in festac okay i grew up in festac lagos yeah so um we're living in festac but the school was in surulere okay so when i finished school you know i didn't enter university immediately so i was taking him to school in you know, Surulere, okay? So every morning, I'll take him to school and then wait for him to close and then bring him back home, okay? Because there, it's not like we could afford a driver and the school was really expensive and we couldn't afford a driver or anything like that. I didn't even know how to drive, you know? We had only just one car. Anyway, long story short, I was available to take him to school, wait for him to close and then bring him back home, okay? So you guys know how Lagos is. You guys know how the traffic is. You guys know how the rush is. Lagos is a madhouse, okay? It's a mad city. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why I don't want to go back to Lagos because I grew up there. I know how Lagos is. Like, nothing in Lagos shocks me, okay? Lagos is a place that I would like to just go have fun for a weekend or one week and come back home, okay? Like, I don't want to live in Lagos. Yeah. One of those days, we're taking him to school because then I used to take a bus from, I think, Mount 2 to Orile, then from Orile, cross the road, enter a bus to Bode Thomas, and then drop at, you know, his school and stuff like that. I can't remember how it was, but it was something like this, okay? So, and by bus, I mean Molue. The one we used to take from Maltu to Orile was Molue. If, if you guys don't know what Molue is, Molue, the only way I can describe it is that it's like an um, American school bus, okay? I mean, how school buses are abroad, that is what we use as Molue in Nigeria. I don't know if Molue is slightly different or bigger. And these buses used to be overcrowded. What I mean by overcrowded, I mean people will be sitting, people will be lapping each other. By lapping, it means carrying someone else on your laps, okay? So people will be sitting, people will be lapping each other, people will be standing, people will be holding on to the bus. Like, it used to be very, very full. And you guys know the rush in Lagos now. So anyway, I was doing it then and we were coping. So most times when I take him to school, it's either I will go to my cousin's house, but at some point I stop going to my cousin's house. I will just stay you know, outside his school, in front of the gates, there was one place near a Malam shop where I used to stay. So I used to stay there with like two or three girls because some other girls that, you know, brought their younger siblings to school. Um, some parents used to even park outside. People that had the time, people used to park outside and wait for the kids to close. So me, I just decided to stay with the girls there because, you know, I made friends with them and we were just, you know, all around the same age. So I used to stay with those girls there. We'll gist, we'll have fun, we'll laugh, we'll walk around. Then sometimes we we'll even leave that place, you know, we'll go to Orile, go and buy stuff, maybe just buy... I remember then I used to buy books a lot. So I'll go to Orile, all the secondhand books, like 100 Naira, 50 Naira, good books. So that's when I bought, like, most of my books that I... I still have some of them till now, okay? 100 Naira, 50 Naira, we'll just go there, buy books, come back, you know, just be gisting, play, having fun, you know, basically making the best of, you know, our time there because, I mean, we had nothing else doing. We just, it's not like now that even have phone you, that you say okay maybe you'll be pressing phone or you watch something on your on your phone then i had just a normal um yeah what they call it all this normal phone that's just for calling you know so this was our routine monday to friday all was going well all was going good we were fine he was working for us and we were good he was improving you know because it was a special school okay so he was we were getting some improvements and some other you know information about what to do to help him as well okay so everything was fine with the school everything was fine you know with me so one of those days okay um as usual we got to mile two we entered the malware and rush as usual which i entered the bus my brother was sitting down right beside me and then when we got to orile 
Now, you guys, if you live in Lagos or if you are used to real Lagos life, okay, not all, some of you that live on, you know, Banana Island or Victoria, eh, eh, I mean, real mainland Lagos hustle, okay? You guys know that Lagos, bus does not wait for you. Buses do not come to a complete stop for you to now take your sweet time and come down. As the bus is trying to stop, all of you are already standing, all of you are already going towards the exit. The moment the bus stops, for a very brief, you know, moment, you jump down, people are already pushing themselves in. Why are you trying to jump down? Like, is a, is a rush, like, is a rush, like, you are dragging yourself out, people are pushing you in, you are dragging, to, uh, like, that's where things used to get missing, that's where they used to steal things from people, those are touch to touch, like, all kinds of, all manner of rubbish, you're going to experience it, you know, in that, in, th in those minutes of, you know, coming down from the vehicle or trying to board the vehicle, okay? So, that particular day, the rush was just so much that, Normally, I used to hold my brother's hand, okay, hold his school bag and my handbag, and then come down from the bus, you know. So, I'll hold his hand, they'll be dragging both of us, both of us will be dragging ourselves still. We come down from the bus, okay. So, that particular day, now, the rush was so much. I remember one particular man pushed me so badly that I somehow, you know, left my brother's hand. Because when the person pushed me, he also pushed my younger brother, just trying to enter. He pushed my younger brother this way. So, you know, his hand slipped off my own hand. I just said, okay, let me just come down from the bus anyway and then try and bring him down, you know. So, in that mad rush of trying to come down from the bus, I don't know what happened, okay? This thing happened, like, so quickly. Like, if you ask me now what happened then, I can't remember. I can't explain it because all I know is that I came down from the bus, you know, made sure to carry his bag properly so I can now grab him from the bus. And then I turned and I couldn't find my younger brother. Hey, I was following the bus. I was asking them to check the bus and my brother is inside, my brother is inside, my brother is supposed to come down here. I was shouting, my brother, my brother. They said, nobody there here, your brother don't come down, your brother don't come down. I was like, no, he didn't come down. Like, I, I, I was literally standing in front of the bus, I was like, he didn't come down. I mean, they said, I beg you, don't come down, Joe, uh, come off a road, you know. They just pushed me from the road and the bus drove off. And I was like, God, because I looked into the bus actually and I did not see him in the bus, okay, in the mall where my head was spinning. See, you guys, I was, I was, I was just like, okay, my brother, I need to find my brother. And I said, asking people, did you see one boy? I was trying to describe what he was wearing. Did you see one boy? You know, he just came down from the bus with me. Like, some people did not even answer me. Some people were like, they didn't see anything. Many people did not see anything. You know, and I said, okay, let me start walking around that. Oh, really, that, okay, if he actually came down from the bus, which I think he did, you know, at that, at that time, if he came down from the bus, maybe he's looking for me as well, okay? So let me not leave. Let me just stay and look for him. So I stayed there. I walked around. I entered places. Like, you guys, I entered places. Now that I'm thinking about this stuff, it's even annoying me and I'm feeling really bad because there were places that I entered there. Imagine a young girl entering a place where men are smoking Igbo. Dark corners. Like, I entered. I was like, I'm looking for my brother. Like, I don't really, I, I, I don't care. I'm looking for my brother. You know? I entered some dark you guys know how Orile is. Orile of there, no? That's now that they're doing a new bridge or they're finishing the bridge or whatever and they've cleared that piece. I'm talking about Orile of, um, that was 2004-2003. Orile of that time was a, in fact, a crazy place. So I entered places that some men smoking, drinking, you know, talking anyhow. I entered there, I was like, I beg, people should help me. I'm looking for my younger brother. They were like, okay, describe him. I described him, they were like, they didn't see anybody like that. I was trying to explain to them that he has special needs and, you know, he's not, he can't really explain himself and tell people where he's going to, you know, because he could talk, you know, like he wasn't, you know, vocal. But yeah, he wasn't vocally advanced, at least for his age. He wasn't like, anyway, I don't want to go into details. So, I was not trying to explain to them that he cannot even explain where he's going to, that please, I'm looking for my younger brother. I described him, they asked me how old I told them. They were like, they didn't see anybody like that. In fact, one person directed me to one small boy, one small street boy, maybe, probably a missing child. I don't know if he's missing or... I don't know, but it was a small boy. Maybe the boy is like six or seven. They were like, no, baby, this. I said, this is not my brother. Like, he's big, you know. Then he was like, maybe 15. I don't know, he wasn't up to 15. I was about 17. So he was like 13, okay? He was 12, 13, you know? So I was trying to explain to them that he's, a, he's an older boy, you know, that I don't know where he is. I said, they don't know. They didn't see anybody. Oh, ah, you guys, I was so heartbroken. I was asking everybody. I was like, hey, God, you should help me. I'm looking for my brother. I walked that day. I, many hours, I was walking around. I walked around the village. I crossed to the other side. I walked to this boy's school, okay? Because I was like, maybe he's on the road. Maybe he, he somehow found a way to cross the road. And you guys, when I mean cross the road, I don't mean cross one road. I mean express, highway, highway, okay? That's what we should cross them. And while crossing with overhead bridge, oh, we were not crossing the overhead bridge, we were crossing like the normal highway. So I was like, there's no way this guy crossed this thing. But even if he did, let me just walk on the street and see if I'll see him. So that was how I walked on the street asking people until until I walked 
to his school, you know. Don't you just told me, just go to his school, just walk to his school. Maybe, maybe somebody saw him and took him to school. Just go to the school, okay? So I walked from Orile, across the road, you know, walked down to Surulere, walked to his school, went to the school and, you know, I, I met the gate man. Because I was still holding his school bag. So I met the gate man. I'm not asking the gate man that, please, did you see my younger brother? I mean, the guy knows me. I know the guy very well. You know, do you see my younger brother? He was like, ah, no, he didn't see my younger brother. And I was not like, please, that if you saw my younger brother, that this is his school bag. All his food, everything was inside the school bag, his books. I'm like, if he found, somehow found his way to school, that please, I want to give him his school bag. Okay, let me backtrack a little bit, okay? One of these days, when I was taking my brother to school, when we got to the streets, okay, his school streets, um, and we came down from the bus, I think I was trying to collect um, my change from the driver or something like that. I think it has to be my change. I was trying to collect change from the driver. I didn't know that my younger brother actually left me and walked down to his school, okay? So, and then he got to school before me. So, the guest man actually told me that, oh, he has gotten to school before me. So, I gave the guest man my brother's school bag, okay? I think that's what happened. I'm not too sure, but I think that's what happened then. So, I felt like, okay, maybe, you know, my brother had found his way to school as well. And maybe the guest man was just angry that, okay, second time this thing is happening, you know? That's what I thought at that time, but... You know, I tried to beg him that, okay, if he's in school, please look at his school bag. Just give him his school bag. The guy did not. He said he's not in school, that he has not seen my brother today, blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, go to his class and go and ask. He was like, he went in and came out and said, nobody has seen my brother. He's not in school. Hi, each on a bend more. Like, <laughs> if you find me, if you look for me in the, in the land of, you know, ghosts. <laughs> like, I was really... I was just, I was devastated. I was like, how would I go and tell my mom that I've lost her child? Like, how does I explain that kind of, what would I, what would I tell her? How do I explain it? I'll tell my parents that, oh, I've lost your, your child though. You know, I didn't call my parents so because I kept like, I was like, no, let me just try and find him myself. When I tried and tried and tried and tried and I couldn't find my younger brother, I was like, okay, I have to just go home and tell my parents what was up. So I think I called, did I call my parents on the phone? I think I did and they told me to come back. I'm not sure, but... I just found my way back home and I remember telling my parents, I don't know if it was on the phone, but when I, anyway, somehow they got to find out that their son was missing. Hey, <laughs> kudos to my parents because they actually took it relatively well. What I mean by they took it relatively well is that they didn't start blaming me or beating me or something like me or whatever. They were like, okay, you know, trying to find him, trying to find a solution, started making calls, called his school, called everybody, callable. Nobody had found my brother. Um, yeah, they now said, okay, they will go to police station and go, oh, what am I saying? I went to police station, no. I went, yeah. I went to the police station and I went to make a formal report, you know, that my brother was missing and I made that report. By myself, oh, before telling my parents, I made the report and they were like, okay, they've not found him anywhere, but if they find him, they'll call me or call my parents and, you know, we should just go home and look out, you know, for the news in case they announce that my brother has been found. Because then, I remember they used to announce on the news, you know, missing child in police station, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think my parents even went back to Ovile to go and look for him. They told me not to come out again, that I should just stay at home and watch TV. The TV was on trial that day. Trust me, I was like this on the TV. That was when I even started crying. So, I was just cleaning tears and watching TV, cleaning tears and watching TV, just hoping that they'll just say, special announcement, we found this. I was watching TV that day. You know, you are seeing, you are looking, but you are not seeing. Like, that's how I was. I was just waiting to hear missing child, okay? Every other thing that they were showing on TV to me was just annoying me. I was just like, I don't, this is what I'm here for. I need to find out, I want to find out what happened to my brother. Eventually, okay, towards the evening time, okay, someone from the school called my parents that they should come and take my brother. That my brother was actually in school. Like, basically everybody had come to pick their kids and my brother was the only one left, okay? So, they should come and take their child. Mind you, this is the same school that I went to and I asked for my brother and he told me that he wasn't there. I even sent the gentleman to go to his class and go and ask the teacher and they came and told me that he wasn't in school. Only for me to find out later on that my brother was actually in school. Somehow, I'm sure it's just God, Somehow he found his way out of that bus. Somehow he found his way and crossed the road. Somehow he found his way and took another bus and dropped at school. 
I don't even know how he got to that school because he couldn't explain himself. He couldn't find, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe somebody took him to school. I don't know. Maybe someone just knew that, okay, there's special school around here. Let's take him there. Because he wasn't even holding anything, no money, no nothing. So how did he even pay the bus fare? How did he get to school? So today, I don't know how because we kept asking him. He couldn't really explain himself. Anyway, long story short, my brother actually found his way to school and this school decided not to say anything because according to them okay according to the adults in that school that think they have sense that are running a school for for crying out loud they said that because anytime i come to school i can't even remember the real story but none of my parents said that anytime I, that they said anytime i come to school that i'll be outside i'll be laughing and gisting and i'll be playing and i'll be going i'll be going out and coming back so they feel like i was non -talent. that was why they didn't tell me that my brother was in school also i see if you ask me what was their thought process now, I can't really explain because it was incredibly stupid. In fact, now that I'm older, I feel like going back to go and talk to them. I wish that back then I could have just gone back to that school to go and get, just go and talk with, just have a chat with them, okay? Just go and have a chat with them from the principal to the guest man. Just go and have a very nice chat with them because what they did was very, very irresponsible. It was very, in fact, anyway. Long story short, he was in school and yeah, they explained what they explained and it didn't make sense. I think my parents actually told them that it didn't make sense, okay? Because I remember that my parents were not angry with me. Initially, when my parents told me about what they said, I was thinking that they would not come and shout at me or something. But I remember my parents were not even angry with me. They were like, that's cool. In fact, because of it, they removed my brother from the school because they were like, what kind of school will do that kind of nonsense because you want to teach his elder sister a lesson? Like, did I steal your husband? Did I, did I break down your school? Did I burn down your car? What did I do that, that warrants that kind of nonsense lesson? You guys know that the trauma I went through actually made my period come out the next day. This was someone that her period just finished maybe like a week before. My period came back again the next day. That's telling you how traumatized I was. Like, I was sleeping, but I wasn't sleeping. Like, when I went, when I went to bed that night, okay, even though I was happy he had come back, I was having nightmares for a very long time. This thing haunted me for a very long time. Because I remember all the things I went through, all the places I entered. Like when I say places I entered, I mean I entered places. I went to the market. I went to the corners of the market. I went to places that normally young girls should not be found, you know, in. I went there looking for my brother. Anyway, let me not get too emotional now. But that was how my parents withdrew my brother from the school and, you know, really talked to them and told them that that thing they did was, 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 it was rubbish. Like it was total rubbish. It made no sense whatsoever. The lesson they were trying to teach nobody nobody got it like they were trying to teach a very stupid lesson that that did not make sense and this just goes to show you how schools in nigeria are not well equipped for you know kids with special needs i don't know about how things are now i'm sure there's a huge improvement but they are still way 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 behind when it comes to managing cases like that and you guys know that in Nigeria, these are not things people, you know, talk about so easily. There are a lot of children in this country that have special needs, but their parents don't say anything. A lot of people, their parents hide them. They don't talk about them. In our own case, kudos to my mom. My mom was very strong. My mom did not hide him for one day. We used to go out with him. We used to go everywhere with him. But I was very, very protective of him. And I think that's part of why I've not really shared this story, you know, on, on the internet. Because I'm very protective of my brother. Like, if I see one useless comment, I'm going to insult you and insult your generation. Like, it's not a case of if you leave a nonsense comment, I'll delete it like I normally do. Or I'll just ignore it. No. If I see any useless comment about my brother or about his case, I will insult you in social generation, you know, and then I'll still block you on top of it, okay? But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm very protective of him. I used to fight for him. Like, <laughs> I remember then if we go out and people are looking at him differently because normally if you look at him, you can't really tell, okay, except when he starts, you know, you know, talking or trying to do some things, okay? That's when you can tell. So then when I go to church or something and somebody is staring, I'll be like, what are you looking at? And trust me, I'm not a confrontational person at all, at all. I'm not confrontational at all. I don't like confrontation. But when it comes to my younger brother, like, like if you do anyhow, you see anyhow, I'll be like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? <laughs> you know, and that's because in this country, people hide it. People don't talk about it. People don't, you know, people don't share their experiences. So whenever such, when, whenever you now encounter people who are open about it, people are very awkward and weird about around them, you know. So 
Um, yeah, that's why I said if you have a child that has special needs in this country, I think you should find your exit, find find a way to exit, but do not hide them, do not try to um, do not try to leave them at home or exclude them from things or try to treat them like there's something really wrong with them. No, okay, you have to include them, you have to find ways to help them. It doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter what the person is born with. You know, there's always a, a way you can manage it, okay? But yeah, I don't go too much into details about, you know, the special needs part because um, it's something that is not really my story to tell. So maybe one day when my mom is free, I'll bring her here and, you know, we'll really talk about it. Thankfully now, there are resources online. There are places you can go. There are even WhatsApp groups, okay? There are schools now in Nigeria that you can go to and then you join their mommy groups and stuff like that. And they'll tell you what they're doing for their kids. They're working for their kids. You know, things you can also implement, meals, supplements stuff like that i can use and manage it you know manage it very well and your child will be able to interact with the world very well okay there are things that you can do so but yeah that's it that's my story time that was how my brother went missing in lagos of all places and it, it traumatized me like i'm not going to lie like anytime i think about it i'm just i start i start i start sweating <laughs> i'm so sweating okay it traumatized me for a very long time and I feel like adults in that situation really like the adults I mean the school they really really failed but thankfully my parents we are they did not they didn't shout at me for once like they didn't they, they understood because Orile is not a place that you go to and just be between <laughs> Orile is a, is a war zone okay or was a war zone I don't know how it is right now but it was a war zone okay so it could have happened to anybody so my parents were not they didn't even like they didn't you know make me feel bad or anything you know they were really sympathetic towards me and all that um even the police too well they didn't really do much but at least they didn't talk anyhow to me you know even the guys i said i enter places where a young girl shouldn't be entering you know the guys were surprisingly okay you know they didn't they didn't talk to me anyhow or treat me anyhow even though they look very dangerous when i mean i mean agbe rose i don't mean normal people i mean agbe rose that we are smoking drinking you know but they we are sympathetic as well you know so i just give god the glory i just thank god that he was found i thank god that you know things did not go sideways you know because <laughs> i don't know what i'll be saying right now i don't think i'd have forgiven myself ever 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 if he was never found like i would have had the, i don't know how my life would have been if my brother was never found no matter how anybody wants to say ah it's not your fault don't worry i don't know how uh, my life would have been right now okay so i'm just grateful to god i'm just grateful that you know things worked out for me and my family um but yeah that is for my story time today i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys learned something from this video as well so yeah i'll see you all in my next video bye guys Mwah.